Hi, I'm Peggy Bendroth, the director of the Congregational Library here in Boston. We welcome author Francis Bremer, professor of history at Millersville University. Professor Bremer is a leading authority on American Puritanism. In fact, we regularly recommend his book, Puritanism, a very short introduction whenever someone comes in and wants a very quick and clear explanation of this very interesting and complicated movement. Professor Bremer is here with us today to talk about his latest book, First Founders, American Puritanis Puritans and Puritanism in an Atlantic World. And so I have just a few questions for you today. Bye. Professor Bremer, this book takes an unusual look at Puritanism, first of all because it's composed of short biographies rather than as a narrative or about an event. Why did you choose to write this way? And do biographies tell us something important about Puritanism? I think so. Uh, this was inspired in some ways by a book that was very popular many years ago when I was a student, uh, Samuel Elliott Morrison's Builders of the Bay Colony. And Morrison had written about various Puritan men and women as a way of indicating both uh, the complexity and the variety of 17th century New England. And I was trying to do the same thing uh, looking at some different people and also including the fruits of recent scholarship. We tend to think of the Puritans as New England property, but your book title suggests something different. Puritans and Puritanism in an Atlantic world. Why is geography an important part of the story? Well, for a number of years I felt, and many other scholars have felt, that really the best way to understand colonial America in general is to put it within the context of English history because these people were reacting to events in England, particularly things such as the English Civil Wars or Puritan Revolution. And the New Englanders that I talk about uh, started in the colonies, but they often ended up in different places. Stephen Winthrop, one of John Winthrop's sons, ended up fighting in the English Civil Wars. Another one of Winthrop's sons, Samuel, ended up as the governor of Antigua. And one could go on and on in various stories that I'm telling in the book uh, indicate that this was not an isolated part of the world, but part of a much larger community. The people you chose to write about are so compelling and so three-dimensional, but so different from each other, not just in the way they lived, but how they believed. Why do those differences matter? Well, I think they help to overcome the stereotypes that we often have. I mean, popular presentations of 17th century New England often show uh, a united, rigid orthodoxy working against dissenters such as Anne Hutchinson or Mary Dyer, Roger Williams. Uh, what I found through my research over the years is that that orthodox group is actually very varied. There are people who are spiritually arrogant, there are those who are humble, and this affects the way they, they deal with certain situations uh, and how 17th century New England evolves. So I think it's important that we indicate the diversity of the society rather than trying to simplify it. Finally, could you tell us why these people are important to us today? What do their lives mean to us in the 21st century? Well, as the title of the book implies, I think in many ways these are the first founders of American society. They did a number of things that continue to resonate down to the present time. One is, as Congregationalists, they believe very strongly in lay participation. And the participatory elements of early New England society are what evolve later into American democracy. Secondly, these are people who have a very strong moral outlook on social life and responsibilities. And again, this is something that one can find uh, resonating through the reform movements of the 19th and even the 20th century. And finally, uh, these are people who were strongly committed to the importance of every one of those lay believers being able to read the scriptures and understand them. And as a result, they had a commitment to education which laid the basis for America's educational history. Many thanks for your visit with us today and we hope you enjoy your stay in Boston. The rest of you, stay tuned for our next Brown Bag Lunch in July.